Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So today, if you've guessed the title and you've been around here a little while, you'll know we're going to be delving once again into some more tips for newer tanks or those players looking to hone their prowess further. Now the topic of today's video is ad fights, and while this may seem a little bit stale for some, I think it's really important to cover because, especially for players transitioning from other MMOs, ESO doesn't have an AoE aggro mechanic, meaning that when it comes to ad fights, you have to kind of pick and choose which targets you're going to taunt with your single target taunts, and you really don't want to fall into the trap of spam taunting everything in sight, because especially at lower levels, you're going to find your resources quickly collapse, and this means, well, if the heals aren't so good, you're going to find yourself being a dead tank on the floor with a little bit of a battered ego. Anyways, before we get into that, I want to briefly say a big thank you to all of my subscribers and supporters so far. We recently hit a 100 sub milestone, which is great and really motivates me to further produce videos. In a similar vein, I appreciate all the comments, good or bad, that have been received through the past few months. I think this really keeps me well on track and ensures I'm producing videos of a good quality as well as making sure they're on content you actually want me to cover. Now, finally, I want to briefly say that I'm opening up further ways for you to follow my channel, such as through Twitter, which just allows you to keep track and also perhaps further insights into what I'm doing at the time when I haven't released a video for a little bit. Finally, and I said finally twice there, but this is finally for this uh, the final time. <laughs> Basically, I'm looking at also setting up a community night or just some way of interacting with you guys if you're interested. I could include doing PvE content, messing around a Cyrodo perhaps, so I'm not particularly a PvPer at the moment, or even just getting on voice comms and talking about various tanking issues or just issues in general you might want questions for, or perhaps you want to debate a particular uh, method of tanking you like personally or just want a second opinion on. Anyways, enough of that guys, let's get right into the content and look at some initial ad fight uh, basics that I want to cover before hopping into some more advanced techniques which might even see you in good stead for trials if you plan on progressing to that content later on in your career. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about in this video is why exactly do I want to stack ads and then I'll briefly show you one of the few easiest ways to actually go about doing so. So for example, let me just find a ranged ad, it should be one just up here. I'll just grab them, there they are. So if we just taunt this ad and pull them down to street level for the video, there we go. And we taunt this melee ad, we'll see we have an issue for our DPS. Now our DPS often use AoEs like this, and no matter how we do it, there's no real way we can actually hit both of the ads without doing a little bit of legwork. So in this situation, what we do is quite simple. All we do is taunt the melee ad and bring them into the ranged ad and apply our group's AoEs, which means both are going to be hit at the same time, allowing us to kill them a lot quicker. Now you can also, if you have a snare, apply snares to the enemies. And the reason you do this is because sometimes the range adds tend to run away when you drag them in, meaning an immobilization, such as what DKs have, can be really useful. Though note that not all ranged adds will do this, some ranged adds will stay quite nicely stacked, irrespective of how close you are to them, and don't exhibit this kind of skirmish behaviour. Now, this is all well and good and it's very simple to do, but what happens, you may be thinking, if we have multiple ranged adds, obviously we can't drag the melee to both of them. Let's just quickly find another ranged add, and there should be one... Where's the shaman? Ah, oh, there he is. So, in this situation you notice we have two ranged adds, and it's kind of awkward, we can't really drag the melee to both. So, there's two ways to go about it. The most efficient way is to drag the melee to one of them, followed by chaining the target on top of the rest. This means you're saving magicka. And then we root the whole lot of them, allowing our group to apply our AoE right now, hitting all three at once. Now the inefficient way to go about it was to chain both of them to our melee ad, and that's something you don't really want to do unless you're forced into it, or perhaps, well, if you have free ranged ads, you're going to have to do that anyways. But you get the idea, we want to minimise the amount of resources that we're spending actually dragging these ads together, which makes it much more efficient actually tanking them. Now, very briefly, let's kill this melee ad, and I want to show you another thing which is worth keeping in mind. If we do not have chains, perhaps on another build, though keep in mind we can use the Swarm Mother set, which I showcase on my build videos for my Nightblade, to have a similar effect to chains. But let's just imagine, for example, we're tanking some ads that we cannot chain, we can't Swarm Mothers, what will we do? So, let's just very briefly find another ranged ad, which is hopefully spawned roughly around about here. Now, this is going to be a little bit awkward, isn't it? And these goblins are going to show me up by not spawning another ranged ad nearby. So as was to be expected, I suppose no other ranged ad could be found in that last clip. But finally one spawned, 
so I can very quickly show you what I wanted to um, demonstrate, as this is a technique you'll often use in some of the harder trials in the game for stacking adds which cannot be chained. Anyways, right now you'll see, well, after this guy's finished his channel, come on mate, any second, I'm just going to get into alright, here we go. So you'll see, they're not moving, they're not stacked, how can we get them together? Well, most adds have a max range, and what this means is we can just run, and, as you'll see here, by stopping still, they've actually ran and stacked up very nicely. And, oh, he's actually very nicely just run away. So let's try it again. So once again, we're going to run away to max range, and these adds are going to just keep on following us in a straight line. Now, assuming that the adds have the same distance, and this guy is doing a snipe mechanic right now, but as you see here, same distance after he finished his mechanic, they're going to stack up nicely, and this means that, well, as you can see, we just bar swap, we can very easily apply our AoEs now, didn't even have to use chains whatsoever. Now that way I just mentioned regarding how to stack adds by running a certain distance, it's not something I often employ in dungeons, primarily for trials to be honest, and the reason behind that is it was a very easy and effective way to stack adds um, when not using chains without actually having to employ that mechanic necessarily. In that we're using a kind of a different line of sight mechanic in order to get them to actually cooperate. So as you saw we hit a, you know, a multitude of adds, some were ranged, some were not, but just stacking around a corner, as you very quickly see, they're all going to stack up nicely on top of us. And just by talenting, we have them all nicely stacked. Now some of them might be a little bit out, but to be honest, we just use our AoE. Pretty much all of them are getting hit right now. It's a really effective way, and we can repeat it just by running back up. We just find another line of sight corner, and it can be something quite you know, minor as well. And they're all going to follow and stack at a particular point. We just come out to meet them when the ranged adds are there, because the ranged adds are the most crucial ones. And we stack them together and AoE down. Just another easy way to do it. Now note that in speed runs, for example, we can actually run really far. And I'll just show it, I guess. You know, you can take, since these adds are not going to de-aggro in a dungeon, we can take as many as we like. Just go ahead, keep moving. Find a corner which to stand behind. In this case, some more adds. Keep on running through, and there's a nice corner here, coming up, keep running. With which this is sit behind, and as we'll see, they're all going to come in. <laughs> oh, I guess maybe I shouldn't have shown this in a uh, Hanging Tips video, we get the point. You can stack them all very nicely. But, I guess, as you know what's going to happen. You're very quickly going to die with this many adds on you. But, hey look, the effectiveness of the stack technique, at least they're all together, right? So if I just had some amazing DPS, I'd be fine. But, I'm going to die here. Lesson learned, I suppose. Don't try that. I was just demonstrating that you can pretty much just aggro them all and get them stacked up very easily without having to worry about them despawning, which happens in overland situations where mobs only follow you for a certain duration before running back to where they actually were. So that's worth keeping in mind if you weren't aware of the fact that they're not going to de-aggro in dungeons. So at this point you may be thinking, you know, what should I actually be taunting first? As I did mention in my video a little bit earlier, that you don't want to fall into that trap of over-taunting and spamming taunt absolutely everything. So one of the general tips I can give you is that sword and boards and two-handers, in addition to melee uh, adds in general, should be the ones you focus on taunting first. Now, why do we leave ranged adds up? Well, they tend to do a little bit less in terms of power attacks, alongside, if they do do some damaging attacks, their channels. What does this mean? It means there's tells which allows our DPS to get out of the way, and in my experience, I find that they respond much better to these than the charge attacks that melee adds do, as sometimes they just forget, and that red sparkles are perhaps a little bit more apparent than the yellow sparkles of a heavy attack. But, let's for example sake, say that we want to actually taunt the ranged adds as well because we don't want the charge attack to be hitting our group. Let's just pretend that our group is right here where I'm jumping now. Just by simply facing these adds away, as you saw just then, we can direct the charge attack in a direction that's not going to be hitting our allies. Once again, there you see it. And that's a really effective way of ensuring that any damaging abilities that adds do do miss the group entirely. So keep that in mind. Positioning the uh, enemies in a way that actually is away from the group can mean that we can significantly decrease the chance that our allies are dying or taking a lot of damage from these group ad encounters. Anyways, that's about all I really want to say in terms of general tips. Naturally, depending on the dungeon, maybe the ranged adds might hit a, bit, a little bit harder with their charge attacks. Though, 
you know, almost always melee will be better in terms of damage and sort of in terms of taunt priority. Also, some fights have Daedra in them. And my Daedra sort of advice is, if it's a big Daedra, you know, not a scamp, pretty much. If it's a big Daedra, if it has a big unit model, this pretty much means the game's indicating to you you should taunt it. So Ogrims, Daedroth, Harvesters, things like that, they should be taunted and faced away from the group. So that any conals they do, such as, I don't know, a, a souped up scamp, Conal, for example, or line attack, is faced away from the group. Now, harvesters are probably the best way of demonstrating that. So, let's just quickly cut to a harvester to showcase what I mean. And that involves me running through the dungeon to try and get to a harvester. Be with you guys in a second. Alright, so just to touch back on what I said in the last clip, here's a particular Daedra that you'll want to also taunt and face away. And as you can see, it fits in with the general guidelines. It's big, it looks nasty. And it's probably going to kill your group if you let it run amok. So, let's get into it. And as a side note, these are bosses, so there's a few different interactions, but I will point those out. Anyways, we taunt it very quickly, and we face it away from the group. Now, the reason we do that in this case is because if we do not, we're going to do this here, and if we don't interrupt it, it's going to do an AoE cone, which does a lot of damage to me, and as you can imagine, a lot of damage to your DPS. Now, as you saw there, I can interrupt it as well, but it always pays to be safe in case you miss an interrupt. But, as you notice here, if I try to chain, I can't chain her. She's, you know, absolutely uh, immovable effectively. You can't chain her. So how do we stack them? How do we make it so it's a lot more efficient to have our AoEs on both? Well, we're going to do that technique I told about where we line of sight. So in this situation, what we do is we run around here to this pillar and we wait a little while. The enemies are going to all run and come to us. Now, here we go. Now they're nicely stacked, faced away from the group, and now, as you see, both are AoEs are going to be hitting them at once. So this is how you effectively manage multiple bosses at once, and stack them even though chains doesn't work. Anyways, that's a very brief showcase, but basically, if ever you want to stack something, just run behind line of sight, or alternatively, as I said before, you can always just run, and eventually when we get out of range, they will move. You see that? They're moving now. You stop, they're going to be stacked. So a very easy way of stacking enemies, um, you can do either technique. Sometimes there'll be nothing to line of sight, so it'll be better to just run away until they stack themselves, or sometimes it'll be much easier in an enclosed environment to stack them just by line of sight if there's a corner nearby. So you get the idea, and as you can see it doesn't only work on ads, but also fights where you have multiple bosses. So before hopping into some live footage, which is just going to be some dungeon runs and kind of just skipping to the trash fights and anything where I'm tanking multiple ads, I just wanted to very briefly showcase what I meant by spamming taunt and everything leading to absolutely, um, well, overlong encounters that's going to really mess up your stamina. As you can see, eventually it's going to get to a point where our stamina isn't doing so well, especially if we want to reapply a taunt. Very quickly, everything is going to be dropping down to incredible levels, so... I don't know, I just thought I'd add this in, just to demonstrate, really reinforce, don't do this, you can end up like me, without any resources, everything's going to start to de-aggro, hit your group, and it's not good. Much rather, um, or it's much better, I should say, to just focus on taunting the main ones, rather than having to try and focus all at once. So, we'll just respawn, and I'll showcase what I mean in this particular trash pool, just to demonstrate. So as you can see, there's quite a few archers, but what we want to do is single out the melee individuals first, and then stack up the archers, and um, there we go. So what we want to do is taunt the, ar uh, taunt the melee. He drops his standard, and now we move over to the archers. He's doing his charge attack, which we interrupt. Now they're all nice and stacked, and we just keep taunt on the melee individuals. And as you can see, you know, when we're using our pots as well, it's going to be a lot easier. But keep in mind right now, I do have obviously all the ads on me. If we were in a situation where a group was here, it would mean that actually the ones we didn't have taunted would be off hitting our allies, so our resources would not be as negatively affected. But you get the idea. I just want to demonstrate in a larger pool just to kind of show you the idea. You want to taunt the melee first, in particular the sword and board in this pool, and then followed by the melee individuals while leaving the archers untaunted. So the first clip we have here is just a very basic trash pool, a couple of them in fact. 
And here we identify that there's a sword and board in the group, and also a couple of melee. So after taunting those, we just want to challenge them and keep them in place, and if we do see any of them run out, you can chain them in there. You see I actually chained to cancel the shield charge, which is something you can do. You can chain enemies to stop their charge attacks, which mean in turn it might not hit the group. Though, also keep in mind that we're facing everything away, as you see the group is standing behind where the adds were, which means that they're not often going to get hit by much as long as they, well as long as I do my job well. Once again we're running in, and we identify there's also a two-hander on top of a sword and board this time, so we taunt them to make sure they're not hitting the group and face away their conals from the group so they don't get damaged, and then we go ahead and just root them all alongside vigoring igneous shields and then just reapplying taunts to the two-hander and the, the sword and board. And likewise with the shield charge you see there, it didn't hit the group as it was faced in a sufficient direction. So yeah, that's pretty much how you want to do it there. Now, we're probably going to skip to another clip very soon. Any second now. And uh, basically this clip here, I'm just showcasing how, yeah, there's many other very visible bigger mobs. So basically, yeah, I did say Daedra before, but in general it's pretty much any mob that looks big. So you can have Big Dwemer, such as the, the Automatons are really quite big and do like cleaves. The same here with this, you're just going to taunt the Daedra first, then drag everything in, make sure that you talons it. And just keep taunt on that Daedra, as it can do some dangerous attacks. Now if you're wondering for other classes how you're going to do this, as obviously we don't have talents to keep them in place. Well, for example, my Nightblade, and also we'd have Igneous Shields to help a group. On my Nightblade I just use Sap Essence and Refreshing Path to just heal the group up. And then I also use Swarm Mothers, and if you haven't heard of the Swarm Mothers set, it's just a two-piece bonus, which when you block, is gonna and you get hit, it's going to drag the enemy that hit you in, as long as they're, I think it's five meters away or more. Now obviously, how do we get them to do that reliably? Well, sometimes you just have to use inner, uh, you know, the range taunt to get them to hit you. But it's a fairly similar principle. Now in the case of adds, where a boss is, you want to just have the boss uh, and the uh, the boss stationary and the adds drawn into the boss. Because often DPS are going to apply their dots to the boss. So it's a good idea that you use chains to collect the adds. And it's kind of just imagine that the boss, I guess, is the ranged add. And um, you're taunting the melee in and you're also chaining any other ranged adds into it. Now some bosses are not going to move too too easily, so you don't have to worry too much, but especially in the case of, of melee bosses, if there's already dots applied, especially if there's any ultimates invested, you want to be keeping that boss at uh, the same spot and dragging others in. Once again, this is just a mixture, so now we're seeing that there's some Daedra and there's also some uh, the shield bearer at the back as well. So on top of taunting the Daedra, I'm going to the back, I'm getting aggro on the shield bearer, and then once I've got that, I'm dragging them in to the group. And as you see, there's already a few ranged where I was standing. So I didn't have to move the melee too too far, and as you can see, the uh, trash pack dies very very quickly, and it's all very nicely stacked. So it's the most efficient way to do it, and nobody was in any real danger of dying. Now coming up, uh, I was getting um, some of my subs to help me do this, and uh, well, I told him to sort of go slower in DPS. So you could see what I was getting aggro on, and uh, well, he decided to meet your because I guess he wanted to show off his his nice DPS, and uh, that'll be coming up any second because he, I guess he thinks he's cool. Posting big trash pack uh, parses. <laughs> Anyways, um, moving on. So, one of the things I wanted to showcase is you see me heavy attack the uh, enemy there. Sometimes your chains will not work, and this particular platform is an example of that. For some reason, chains happens to bug out occasionally where you can't actually chain the enemy, it'll just like kind of half shoot out and then not work. You can fix that issue by just heavy attacking, and then it'll allow you to chain is no problem. So, if you ever notice your chain is not working and it's not pulling in your enemies, like it seems to just not even be casting whatsoever. It's normally because of a weird terrain issue, and if you just heavy attack your nearest enemy, or any enemy, you will then be able to chain perfectly easily. And that makes this fight a lot easier, you see everything's nice and chained. But normally if you don't do that, you'll be unable to stack it quite as well. So, basically, uh, I just want to quickly sum up, I guess, as we go for this last clip. The basics of it are, you want to be primarily taunting any sort of big looking enemy, any sort of intimidating Daedra, or you know, spider looking boss or Dwemer, huge boss, just heaps of large enemies in the game, you get the idea. You're going to be taunting those, but obviously you'll learn as you progress through the dungeons which ones are more dangerous than others, that's just experience. In addition also two-handers and sword and boards tend to be more dangerous than other enemies, that's a good general tip. When you do sort of get them together you want to be pulling melee to the most range and then dragging in the other ranged, and then just finish that off by, you know, Handling them in, rooting them in if you're a different class, and just providing group heals if you're a different class as well, just ensuring your allies stay alive. Actually, having just recorded that previous part of the video a little bit earlier, I thought to myself, maybe I should also include some clips on how we should do it on our non-DK tanks. And you see I'm using Swarm Mothers. 
and I'm dragging the enemies in just basically when they attack me. And how do I get aggro on them to attack me? Well, I use a taunt as I said before, but also you can just get initial aggro with things like Sap Essence, um, Mystic Orb for example is another one I use. And even as you saw just then, he ran out of the pack the enemy to do an attack. He did it on me again, and then he got pulled right back in. Really nice way of passively drawing in enemies sometimes, you don't always need to expend resources to get them in. Once again here, I taunted the sword on board, now I'm just facing all the enemies away from the group so that they don't damage my allies. The archers go a coin or something, so yeah, pretty much as much the same. Now coming up, I'm going to also show how Mr. Corp to get aggro and then kind of line of sighting with that aggro can be used on a non-DK and how we hold them in place. Uh, so in this particular example, I'm going to be utilizing Veil, vale, which both damages the enemy, which is a little bit nice as it does help maintain aggro if you don't have everything taunted. And in addition, it's going to be snaring the enemy, meaning they can't actually run out of the group as easily as they could do if you didn't have the ability down. Now you will see that sometimes enemies are a little bit slow if you're aggroing multiple packs and dragging them around a corner to stack them that way. But Swarm Mothers will help speed it up a little bit, as often they're going to hit you first if you aggro them with Mystic Orb, like I did. A little bit of lag there, but uh... Yeah, anyways. In addition, I'm going to also point out uh, just reiterate really the importance of Swarm Mothers. It's a really great set and honestly for any non-DK tanks that are thinking about it, really you should, you should test it out. For example this room here, very very spread out. Now if you, you know, didn't have Swarm Mothers it would be very difficult to stack this. Yes we could run around a corner and stack it that way, but that requires your group all being on board. If you're just doing a random group, it's, you know, sometimes they're not going to listen to you, they're just going to stand there. And as we know, since we're not taunting all the enemies, sometimes these enemies will just run after them, which means that the stack become, uh, could become quite messy. And so obviously, you want to try and be as self-sufficient as possible as a tank when it comes to stacking the enemies. And so that's why Swarm Mothers is great. If you're in a random group, you don't have to rely on their cooperation to stack them effectively. And even very spread out rooms like this can be stacked uh, with this set, which is honestly uh, phenomenal. Um, it's probably one of the best changes that's happened in a while in terms of just giving other tanks uh, a mechanic which works just as well as chains or you know a little bit less I suppose. It really depends on the environment but it's very comparable and competitive when compared to chains. So I can't recommend it enough. Please do try it out. Swarm Mother's two-piece set. So that's about everything I wanted to talk about today with regards to this particular tip video. As a final aside I guess I just wanted to point out that a lot of these techniques, particularly the stacking technique where we taunted enemies and then ran until they started following us, particularly ranged enemies, is something you will really find useful in certain trials such as Sanctum of Fidia and Maw of Lockage. Why do I mention that? Well, I pretty much just mention that because it's good to keep in mind that even these basic understandings of how we actually control and stack enemy mobs can actually have, you know, knock-on effects for really difficult content further down the line. So it's really important that you get a good understanding of all the different ways we can stack them so when it comes to be your turn to tank these particular dungeons, uh, or trials, you, you know, have a better intuitive knowledge of how to actually go about doing it if you're, you know, required to do so. Anyways, as always, if you wanted to talk about anything in the comments, discuss any sort of concepts, or maybe query a point you were a little bit unsure of in this video, please don't hesitate to ask in, you know, the below in this video, or even on Reddit or Twitter, or wherever it may be posted, as I do really appreciate all the feedback and obviously um, all the support for engaging with the channel. Anyways guys, take care and uh, well, until another video, I guess I'll see you later. Bye.